Hello, welcome to CUO, where we promote empowering information about Africa and Africans and correct the misrepresentation of Africa and Africans. Today, <laughs> we are still on the matter, and this is in regard to the way Nigerian men abused in the legal system under allegations and guise of scamming or frauding. Please, I need to start by emphasizing and stating very clearly any form of scamming, whether done by Nigerians to Nigerians, any kind of fraud through the internet, in whatever form, is wrong. And those found guilty should and must be penalized under the court of law and, if convicted, serve the terms that are required to address their mistakes or what they've done. My issue here is that Nigerian men are not being given that opportunity. They are, they are right, they are right to access to legal representation is being abused. The laws globally are being abused when it comes to Nigerian men, and that is the issue here. Now, last month in June, the popular Nigerian East Instagrammer, Hosh Poppy, was picked up in the United Arab Emirates, UAE, specifically in Dubai, on the allegations of fraud and scam. He was detained. Although it was an allegation, he, was not, he had not yet faced the court of law, he was paraded publicly, humiliated publicly, and this has become the pattern for Nigerians around the world. Without being convicted, he was brought forward, literally humiliated, on the allegations of scams and fraud. Now, recently, we hear he's mysteriously now in the United States, which is strange because the United Arab Emirates and the United States of America do not have an extradition agre agreement which would allow one country to move one suspected of a crime in another country to another country. But Hosh Poppy is now in the United States to face the law on allegations of scams and fraud. And this is indicative again of how the laws, how global, war, global legal systems are manipulated, adjusted for different self-interest when it comes to African countries. And it's especially so for Nigerian men. Please, I would emphasize again, if Hosh Poppy is guilty, yeah, but he has to face a, law, a court of law first before it's assumed that he's guilty. Now, Hosh Poppy's lawyer has come forward to say that Hosh Poppy was basically kidnapped to the United States. But the United Arab Emirates say, no, 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 no. They expelled Hosh Poppy. But Hosh Poppy is a Nigerian. Why couldn't you have, he have why couldn't you, UAE have expelled him to Nigeria? I'm really surprised and disappointed at the, from the, by this action from Dubai because the UAE has been a playground for the Nigerian rich. Yes, I will be looking for a new place to do my annual shopping. Come on. Please. <laughs> Let's be clear here. We need a more inclusive definition of what it means to be a scammer. Or fraudster because individuals can be scammers and fraudsters countries can be scammers and fraudsters too yes we have individuals maybe Nigeria is a country over 200 million people the most populous black country in the world so of course Nigerians are everywhere but it's not an appropriate it's not the, the few that get into trouble it's not represented it's not a good a fair representation of the population of the country there's some racism there that drives the need to blanket and and um, brand Nigerian men in a particular way, you know. Now, Hosh Poppy might be guilty of being flamboyant on Insta Instagram, and I'm surprised the United States will have a problem with it. Their economy is built on selling a flamboyant culture around the world. That's how they make their money. In fact, their current president is a flamboyant one. So, if Hodge Poppy is going to be found guilty, why can't we at least, at a minimum, allow him that space, allow him his legal rights? We need a more inclusive definition 
of what it means to be a fraudster and a scammer right now. We need a more inclusive definition. The way it's being defined us is not working for the world. Let me break it down to the United States and the UK, where we've had quite a good number of Nigerians jailed indefinitely on allegations of scam and fraud, mainly men. Please, the United States economy is bolstered <laughs> by foreign students, and a lot of the foreign students from Nigeria that come into the States to study are children of many who held public office, who've looted, stolen, scammed the future of many Nigerian young men. So the United States of America, when you get student application, make sure that the students coming into your country, into your country, sorry, coming in to support your universities, make sure they are not, their, their fees are not being paid from stolen money in Nigeria. It's the same with the healthcare system. When public servants who should invest and build up public healthcare system in Nigeria do not do so, steal funds, and when they fall ill or those of their relatives, they bring it to the West, North America, or anywhere in the world, don't take it. Before you do, even if you're saving your lives, try to make sure they are not, they've not brought in stolen healthcare money. It's the same for real estate. Oh, we know many of the best, best homes in London, the most expensive, are owned by Nigerians who've stolen money from Nigeria and are bolstering. Yes, it's, the, it's a shame that Nigerians are willing to put the future of, the, of their generation, their children, at risk to buy expensive property in London. But for the UK to show that it's not a country that scams Nigeria, it should reject those funds, investigate the source of it and reject it. It's the same thing for the banking financial institutions in North America and Europe. Don't accept stolen money, public funds from Nigeria. You are, that makes your country a scamming country. You are participating in scamming Nigeria's youth. When you willingly accept stolen funds from Nigeria, you are scamming Nigeria. And that, and that is stealing the future of many Nigerians who find themselves floundering, resorting to high-risk coping mechanisms. Nigeria is a rich country. I come from the Niger Delta of Nigeria, where oil, rich in oil, but my, 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 my people have been kicked off their land, off their farming land, because oil funds, resources are stolen, yes, by Nigerians. And the stolen money is lodged in Western banks, in Europe and North America. That is coming, my people, in the Niger Delta. So let's have a more inclusive definition of what scamming is. But bottom line, stop parading Nigerian young men, those you've not found guilty yet of fraud or scam. Stop humiliating them, parading them as scammers until they face the court of law. Stop exploiting Nigerian men's legal rights. Stop abusing Nigerian men's legal rights. Stop denying Nigerian men access to legal resources to represent themselves. That is a gross human rights violation. Because really, if the West want to address scamming in Nigeria, they should start with how they participate and join corrupt leadership in Nigeria to scam Nigerians. Nigerians are being scammed. Thank you very much.